Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. I'm about to read Hebrews chapter 6, but before I do, I just want to point out something to you. Hebrews chapter 6 starts with the word, therefore. So obviously it's referring to what was said uh, in the prior bit of the the text in Hebrews chapter 5. And so Hebrews chapter 5 emphasizes that Jesus is our high priest, uh, just like uh, uh, he's a priest in the order of Melchizedek, as was prophesied in Psalm 110. And it goes on to say that during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he had to learn to obey God the Father, that even though he was once perfect and had once been God himself, that in the days of his flesh, he had to learn to operate as a human being in obedience. And so it goes on in chapter 5 to say that we as Christians also have to learn obedience and we have to grow up. We have to move on from the elementary teachings of salvation and move on to mature and to become mature sons and daughters of God. And so that's the therefore in Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, let us move on, it says. So uh, since we've got to move on to maturity, therefore, let us move. So Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death, and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessings of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown Him as you have helped His people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and give you many descendants. And so, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of His purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, He confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. When I introduced the book of Hebrews, I mentioned that some believe the author was Paul, some believe the author was Apollos, some believe Aquila or Priscilla or one of the other Uh, luminaries mentioned in the New Testament. The truth is, we don't know who the author of Hebrews was. However, the testimony of Hebrews is clear from beginning to end. Jesus is greater than everything Judaism had to offer, and it's time for us to grow up that Jesus died to give us more than just salvation. He died to bring us forward to maturity. So in verse 1, we read, 
Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites and the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment, and God permitting we will do so. Now, this is not saying we abandon the need for people to get saved. This is not saying that we abandon the laying on of hands to raise people up into ministry. It's not saying that we stop preaching about the resurrection of the dead, nor preaching about eternal judgment and hell. These things are necessary. They're the foundations of the faith, and they're part of the faith once delivered to the saints. However, we don't need to do these things every week. We need to move forward to maturity. We need to live what we believe. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my words. And so this obedience is an expression of our love to Christ. It's an expression of our maturity and our apprehending the truth that Jesus died to give us. It goes on to talk about seemingly backsliders. And I want to tell you a little story. When I was first growing up in the church, I heard the word preached uh, that we've just read from Hebrews chapter 6, where it says it's impossible for those who've once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and shared in the coming age and so forth, who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. Now, when I heard that, it said to me that if you ever backslide, Or if you ever find yourself in willing disobedience after having been saved, there's no hope for you. And so I didn't continue the chapter. I didn't go on to read the chapter. But it it goes on to say, we don't feel that about those who are reading this. It says we're convinced of better things in your case, uh, the things that have to do with salvation. And it goes on and says, God will not be unjust. He'll not forget your work and the love you've shown him. What's my point? My point is... If your conscience is pricked and you repent, you can turn back to the Lord. There's always a path back home to the Lord. The Lord has made it possible for anyone uh, repentant for their hearts to come and uh, be acknowledging Jesus Christ as the only source of forgiveness, for your heart to be pricked, for your conscience to be pricked, for the sin to come up in your heart and repentance to come up on your lips. Friends, these are things that indicate you have not irrevocably turned away from the Lord. And so if the devil has lied to you and said, it's hopeless for you, that you're too far gone, you're too hard-hearted, you're too far removed, there's no hope for you, I can tell you that firsthand I experienced the same thing. And for many years, I was estranged from God, not because of anything God had done, but because of my wrong understanding of this very passage we're reading. I'm going to read the passage again, and then I want to talk about it a little more. Verse 4, it's impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away, there's the key word, to be brought back to repentance. It's impossible for them to be brought back to repentance, it says. To their loss, they're crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. And so, friends, the point here is not that God does not accept people who are repentant, but that some people's hearts become too hard to consider repenting. And because they refuse to acknowledge Christ as the only means of repentance, there's no hope for them. In other words, if you come to the point where you don't accept the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ as being sufficient to remove your sins, to be worthy of your acknowledgement and and your repentance and turning from your sins, then there's nowhere else to turn. This is really what the passage means. And so never let anybody tell you that just because you've backslidden or because you've sinned that the Lord won't take you back. Remember always the parable of the prodigal son. The virtuous father was waiting for the son to come back. And the Lord is waiting for you, my friends, son or daughter, whichever you may be, to come back from your backsliding, to come back from being turned away from the Lord, to repent and come home. Jesus is faithful. He loves you. He has not forgotten you. And he'll help you if you'll come back to him. The writer of Hebrews says, we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. In other words, be diligent to repent. Be faithful to obey and observe those things you understand to be principles of righteous living. As the writer of Hebrews says, grow up. 
Move forward to maturity. Don't be satisfied with the fact that you prayed a prayer of salvation at one point in your life and then you just moved back into your sinful ways. No, depend on the Lord's faithfulness. Rely on the Lord. But do what's right, friends. Do what's right. We can depend on the Lord's faithfulness. In verse 17, we read, Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of His purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, He confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. And so the Lord is faithful. He is faithful and just to forgive those who repent. We have the certain hope based on the finished work of Jesus Christ that if we confess our sins and turn to the Lord, He is faithful to forgive us. He will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He will restore us to right relationship with Him. And so once again, I say to you, whoever you are, if you know in your heart that there's something separating you from the perfect will of God, go ahead and repent. Put the thing on the altar, friends. Put the person, put the object, put the sin, the pet sin, whatever it is, on the altar, and call on God to help you. He's faithful, and He will help you. We read in verse 19, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And my friends, the high priest Jesus Christ lives forever to intercede for people like me and you. He's praying for us right now as I'm speaking to you. He's praying that we would grow up, that we would repent and come home that we would enter into the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ, and we would run the race that's set before us. So if you've backslidden, this is your time to come home. Lord, I ask that you would forgive any of those who have been pricked by this word. Lord, that you would help them to be diligent to the very end, to confess their sins and repent and come back. Lord, nobody within the sound of my voice is too far for your saving grace. Let them repent and let them acknowledge Jesus Christ as the only source of the forgiveness of sins. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.